This is one of the hundred famous mountains of Japan. A fairly manageable yet epic hike in the snow. Welcome to Mount Akagi, high up in the mountain ranges of Gunma, Japan. Join me as I undertake a day hike on a sunny but frigid winter's day, and then stay the night at the unfamiliar city of Maibashi, which I then briefly explore the following morning. An adventure in two places. The day begins with a long train ride in the glow of dawn. From the metropolis to the rugged landscapes of Gunma. Then, at Maibashi, a transfer to a winding bus journey that would take me up to the cold, clear highlands. Oof, it is about as cold as I imagined it would be. There's like some frosting on the upper levels of the mountains. Hopefully those will remain when I get up there because I kind of want to see the frost on the trees. My fingers are already kind of dying. Ooh, it's frigid. Gotta work up that body heat. <sighs> the initial part of the climb was a continuous uphill, made particularly harrowing by the sub-zero winds. But my spirits were high, and I forged on, making steady progress. Alright, I think this leads out to the ridge line, which will probably get more windy. But I'm feeling a bit better now, got the blood pumping, my fingers don't feel like they're falling off anymore, so that's good. The view is already Pretty amazing. The climb continued for a few more sections before finally emerging at an open ridge line. this incredible up here upon the shoulder of the mountain range the majesty of Akagi's vast landscape was laid bare Surprising enough, it has actually become less cold up here. I think I have this beautiful sun to thank. This feels great. High on the ridge, much of the volcanic Lake Onuma can be seen below, partially frozen in the frigid climate. I 
I arrived at the first summit of the day, Mount Komagatake, pausing with a number of other hikers to admire the view. But a more imposing challenge loomed just ahead. This very imposing edifice ahead here is the tallest point in the Akagi mountain range, Mount Kurobi. That's our destination. Ascending the steep face of Mount Kurobi, the ridge trail I erstwhile traversed could be seen below and behind, cutting a white line across the terrain. Relentless uphill. I think I'm actually starting to sweat a little bit. But I think we're almost there. Rocky Shrine lay just a few paces from the true summit. And then, under startling blue skies, amidst a small gathering of people and a dog, was the Kurobi summit, the tallest point of Mount Akagi. Highest point in the Akaki range. It's a surprisingly lively summit and very sunny. And just as I hope, there's some frost on the trees. It's very beautiful. Excellent, excellent. So that over there was the true summit, but there's a little signboard that says that there is a Zeke spot, i.e. awesome view spot, just two minutes ahead. So I'm gonna take the little detour and see what's in store. Feeling is hard to put into words. The rugged landscape stretched into the distance. The air was crystalline, and I just basked in the high of being atop a great mountain. Oof. Now that is a Zeke Pointo. That's some view. Although as usual it comes with wind. Despite the harrowing gales that bleached the branches white, the sun shone overhead with a triumphant assuring radiance. So normally, what I do is, I have lunch on the summit, but I'm actually not really feeling hungry today. And also, I know in my heart of hearts that if I were to sit down and slow down and have lunch like that, the cold is gonna catch up to me and I'll be freezing my fingers off again. So I'm just gonna go ahead and 
to sit down. Whew. This downhill section has been surprisingly pretty tricky and brutal. So I do not think that it is snowing. I think the wind has just been blowing the frost off of the trees. <sighs> Finally, what a slog. This last downhill is actually the hardest part of the entire hike. Thanks to it, I've missed the bus I wanted to take. So now I'll have to hang around here for a bit, take the next bus. Well, with the bus gone, I have some extra time now. So might as well stroll around, check out the sights. A simple but peaceful shrine stood upon the northeastern shores of the icy Lake Onuma. With the bus almost an hour away, I huddled here and watched the gathering sunset. So a Japanese YouTuber just kind of reached out to me. We spoke for a bit and exchanged channels. He's got way more subscribers than I do, but yeah. Shiratori-san, yoshiku onegaishimasu. Although, this video is going to come out much, much later, so it's anyone's guess if you will even see this video. Okay. I'm about done. I'm gonna see if I can find a relatively warm place to wait for the bus. As the cold is starting to get to me again. You can see the ice all along the shoreline. Everything by the lake seems to be closed, so I'm gonna try heading to the visitor center and hope that there's at least like a sheltered waiting area there or something. If I keep on moving, then I can generate heat. <sighs> yeah, well, not much luck. Complex is already closed. Like half an hour ago, so just gonna have to puff it out for the next 20 minutes. The bus is already here, just that we can't board it yet. That is the most ice cold milk tea I've ever had. So, fortunately for me, 
because I'm staying the night in this area, I'll be able to hit the hot sand despite missing the previous bus. So, can't wait. Ooh, all right, so talk to you after the bath as usual. Deciding to just try and eat something here. I've got about half an hour before the bus arrives, so. So, this is like Nayu soba, which I've never tried before. Apparently, you're supposed to dip it in the Nayu. So they've actually got a really nice view of the city lights from here. We are kind of on top of a hill. The kind of wasted thing though is that you can't see it from the bath. So still, for 520 yen, this place is a steal. Highly recommend it if you ever come to this area. Fujimin Onsen. So just like with Tukemen, after you're done with the noodles, you can pour some hot soba water into the sauce and the result tastes remarkably good. Super friendly kitchen staff too. This was excellent. Okay, we are back in town and uh, I think I'll probably just head to the hotel and check in now. I don't feel like I necessarily need to do much exploring tonight because I'll probably be doing some of that tomorrow. We will see how it goes. Hotel first. Too small either. Decent room. Let's see if we can see anything out here. I like having a window by the bed actually. This is nice. Not the most amazing views, but there's stuff to see. Good enough. Like the station area is just right over there. Wow. Looks like that's actually an onsen facility right here as well, just a few blocks away from the hotel. I guess I could have made use of this one if I didn't go to that other one. Anyway, feeling a bit antsy so decided to come out for a bit. If nothing else, I can get myself a drink from the convenience store and head to that building next to the station. It's always nice to have these little night walks in a new city. It's like being lost, but yet not. An indescribable feeling. It's 
So it looks like this is actually chiefly a bookstore. But they also sell like sundry items and like food and random stuff. I used to love gigantic bookstores like these. But at least back home they don't seem able to survive, which is a shame. They've even got like seats for reading. There's an entire aisle here dedicated to just Isekai comics, which is interesting. Okay, that satisfies my wanderlust for tonight. I got my drink, time to head back to the hotel. Much else to do now except to beat some dojin and then go to sleep I guess. Oh, I'll see you tomorrow. I just want to compliment this hotel on a really comfortable bed. This is nice. Time to get out though. You can see mountains in the distance just surrounding the city. So this is interesting. This is apparently called Okirikomi. It's kind of like a Japanese Tao Xiaomi and Yun Gui kind of thing, I guess. Not bad. Right, this is a Mai Bashi thing. That was actually an excellent quality breakfast. Better than some of the ones I paid for. So, Mai Bashi so far, good bang for buck. Ooh, kind of a windy day today. Anyway, I've just checked out. I'm gonna do a bit of exploring. I identified uh, an interesting looking spot on the map. I'm just gonna walk in that direction and see if anything else distracts me. That's, that's the plan. That might be the Akagi Mountains that we hiked yesterday, way in the distance. Nice little riverside path over here. idea what that is. Some sort of a bell? I think the carving there says Sun Bell. Interesting little city monument I guess. So apparently this man here is a 19th century poet. He does have a pose befitting a man of poetry.
hey, there's a little fun fair here. Cool. They've actually got the inner precincts of the temple house within this really large modern glass structure. Just unique. So, no real idea what this really impressive looking building is, but apparently I can enter, so we're gonna go take a look. So it's called Ningo Kaku, apparently. So it is apparently a 19th century guest house. Got a very nice retro kind of style. So Rinko Kaku was apparently used to house VIPs of the state, built in this attractive Japanese style during the modernization of the Meiji era. Maibashi herself was apparently a hub for the international silk trade, hence the need to receive foreign dignitaries. And entry is free too. I can't imagine those fish are enjoying themselves in this cold weather, but that was very, very cool. But I've already spent way more time than I anticipated on this walk around town, so I'm gonna head back now. I'm gonna book it. So this is very interesting. So there was an Anglican church just around the corner over there and here there is an Orthodox church in close proximity, both quite large. Interesting. Okay, briefly back to the hotel, fetch my luggage as this pretty much wraps up my little adventure around Maibashi city. I will head to the station, maybe get some McDonald's, and then we'll take the long train ride home. Little unplanned city adventures like these are a great bonus of going hiking in an unfamiliar city. You never know what you'd encounter. But for now, it's time to head back to Tokyo. Until the next adventure, thanks as always for watching.